Tony Baldinelli questions Dennis Finette on the problems with Arrive Can and why so many staff shortages occur in airports as well as the CBSA. Why wasn't the CBSA able to operate when all other colleges were still in session? Here's the clip. Next, we have Mr. Baldinelli. Mr. Baldinelli, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Uh, my questions are going to be to, uh, to Mr. Vanette, and uh, thank you for being here. It's, it's good to see you again. Um, Mr. Vanette, uh, one of the main issues uh, plaguing our airports not only is Arrive Can, but we're also hearing about a severe shortage in uh, staffing with regards to CBSA officers, not only at our airports, but our land border points of entry. Uh, so, Mr. Vanette, you know, what does CBSA need to do to achieve its full staffing complement in Canada. You are, how many officers are we short? So the CBSA plans every year for its seasonal fluctuations in traffic in the various modes, land and airports and through the cruise ship season and aligns its resources and moves them accordingly. Uh, in support of the air transportation sector, we hire student border services officers every year and they come on strength after their school year ends in April. And they help us and we retain some of them through the balance of the year so that they're ready to be on site the following year. So they supplement our workforce. In terms of the overall um, uh, workforce, uh, unlike uh, like, like other, uh, I guess, sectors, we have had individuals who, as a result of COVID and other measures, have been unable to attend to the workplace. And we've respected that and we've worked with them. And they've continued to con contribute to our border services by supporting uh, the front line through other venues and other programs to ensure that we could sustain the uh, capacity. So we continue to advance the staffing. And I'm pleased to report that we've actually doubled our recruit recruitment target for the next two years in order to offset uh, the loss of some officers as a result of uh, the COVID uh, restrictions that may have been um, you know, affecting them and their ability to return to the workplace. Well, well thank you for that. I, I was just checking the, uh, the CBSA employment page earlier uh, before coming over and it said that uh, there was a COVID notice and it said due to the impacts of COVID-19, we are experiencing unfor unforeseen delays with some aspects of the selection process. Um, in, in speaking with several stakeholder groups, they, they had heard that the CBSA training session was closed during COVID. And uh, maybe that's possibly why the, the shortages and the backlog of officers needed. Um, I'm wondering if you can confirm that. Was that training center, in fact, closed for a period of time? Did that add to the backlog? And, and why are we still experiencing unforeseen delays with some aspects of the selection process? And so the CBSA did shutter its uh, national uh, college for recruitment in Rigo, Quebec for, I believe it was two cycles. I would have to confirm that. Um, and then when it was safe to do so, we reopened uh, and we actually uh, had individuals report to the college. They would quarantine for the 14 days before we began classes. Visitors were kept from uh, entering the location to ensure that we could keep the college as sterile as possible. So we are now back in full operation. And as I stated, we'll be doubling our recruitment in order to play. To Thank deploy. you. Uh, now, in, in terms of that cohort, you, you had mentioned two cohorts. How many officers would that have uh, been in total? In a given year, we target uh, about 275 to 300 new recruits. And therefore, it could have been upwards of 600. And there, we are now back in full cycle and we will complement our resourcing by doubling those uh, cohorts for the next two years. Now, was CBSA unable to operate? I mean, colleges, universities, even the Ontario Police College were, were operating in a virtual manner. Uh, why was the, the training center not able to do the same? The type of work that we undertake requires that our officers learn hands-on how to operate both the systems, they have to have access to those systems, how to inspect vehicles, they do use of force training throughout the entire curriculum. And so our training for officers is 20 weeks long. The first four are at residence online, and then the following 16 need uh, to be in person, very similar to police uh, training and recruitment. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Uh, thank you. Mr. Vinnett, uh, when we last met in June, um, it was at the International Trade Committee, I had asked you if you had the opportunity to visit Niagara Falls, uh, again, which is the number one leisure tourism destination in Canada. So with only four weeks left, I were, I, I, I'm truly hoping you were able to do so. And is that the case? Uh, I vacation. My summer vacation was spent at Niagara on the Lake and in Niagara Falls uh, this this summer. I have not visited my operations there at this time. I've been heavily focused uh, on the airport operations, and it's been well in hand with our regional director general for the area, with whom I'm in touch on a daily basis, to ensure that you know we are being responsive 
to the you know demands in terms of individuals who are traveling through uh, our land borders, which is now recovered to uh, just above 60% uh, of historical volumes. Renette, uh, consider this your invitation again to come down. I'd, I'd love to have you down. Again, we've got four bridges in my commu- uh, my riding alone, and two of those are in the top four commercial bu- uh, commercial land crossings in all of Canada. So they're vitally important to us. So uh, to ensure uh, the efficient and effective flow of traffic, we would like to have you down. And in fact, speaking to those two bridge commissions, because in fact, land uh, we're, we're finding bridge traffic down 50% pre-pandemic, but we're finding wait times that could be over two hours long in comparison to pre-pandemic times. So we need to find a better solution to those uh, impacting uh, the the efficient flow of tourism and and trade crossing those border points. Thank you very much, Mr. Baldinelli. And 